This conference will now be recorded. Hello, thank you for being an exhibitor at an AEM event and especially for logging in to this online educational program titled Best Planning Practices to Produce Meaningful Trade Show Results. My name is Jefferson Davis. I am a trade show productivity expert with Competitive Edge, and I've had the privilege of working with AEM over the years on their exhibitor educational program. We designed all these sessions to be brief, practical, and supported with a tool. So let's get started here on how to plan for results. Okay, key insight as we start off, and I know you've heard this one before. If you fail to plan, you're planning to fail. Uh, that's very true, and as we mentioned in our first course, trade shows are a really big investment of financial and human capital. If you're gonna get real value and ultimately return on investment, you're gonna have to plan thoroughly and execute carefully. One of the key things I've observed over the years, which kind of blows me away, and research from Exhibitor Magazine has found it to be true also, is that three out of four exhibitors set no specific goals for trade shows. Now, everybody has reasons, right? Like if I were to ask you, why are you exhibiting? I'm sure you would give me your reasons, but here's what I've learned over the years, is that reasons are not enough. Uh, reasons are too general, too 30,000 foot. If we're going to get specific results, uh, we've got to get more focused. The second problem that I think is limiting uh, exhibitors pre-show planning is getting caught in what I call the logistics trap. The average exhibitor is spending 95% of their pre-show time on logistics and operations. What I mean by that is get the space, get the booth, get the graphics, get the products, get the equipment, get the people, send it and ship it and fly it all there, set it up, tear it down, send it home, and do all that on time and on budget and call that pre-show planning. I don't really call that pre-show planning. I call it dealing with logistics and operations. Um, the only thing spending the majority of your time in the logistics trap will guarantee is that your booth, your products, and your people show up. It won't guarantee that you get anything from the big investment of both human and financial capital. So we've got to get a little sharper in our pre-show planning. So I want to give you five power tips, and then I want to walk you through a step-by-step -step process to put together an exhibiting by objectives program. Number one, start early. The worst thing you can do is wait till about four weeks before showtime and start to ask yourself, okay, uh, what are we gonna do? Uh, it's very late in the game. The rule of thumb is to start at least 16 weeks before the show. So you should always try to be contracted in a show at least 16 weeks ideally farther in advance to get better space, and then start your planning in chunks 16 weeks before the show. Number two, make sure that you budget enough time for pre-show planning. Depending upon the length of the show or the number of exhibiting hours in the show, you're gonna wanna budget at least one planning hour for every exhibiting hour in the show. For example, if the show has 24 exhibiting hours, it's a three-day show with eight hours a day, you should be planning about 24 hours of pre-show planning time beginning at least 16 weeks before the show. This will give you the time and the space to make sure that you're dealing with the strategic side of it. Number three, ask your key players um, what they expect your exhibit to accomplish. So talk to marketing leadership, talk to sales leadership, Talk to product managers and ask them, what do you feel our exhibit program, what results are you expecting? Number four, when you do get into planning mode, uh, don't try to do everything at once. Take one goal at a time and work, create the written action plan one goal at a time. Number five, um, follow up on your planning. So, you know, the old rule, you've got to inspect what you expect holds true with planning. 
So I'm gonna walk you through now the process of exhibiting by objectives. And it really looks like this image on the screen here. It starts with reasons, right? You, okay, here's our reasons why we're exhibiting. We're converting those to SMART goals, which we'll do in a moment. We're developing a written action plan. We're communicating it to everybody on our team. Then we're executing the plan and then we're measuring both the activity and the ultimate results. And once we do that, once we've created written action plans for different goals, we don't have to recreate the wheel for every show. We can take the plan out, we can change the dates, review it, look to what worked, and save time as you go on. So let's get into the process here. Okay, step number one in the process starts with your reasons for exhibiting. And you can see on the screen here, the three major areas that you wanna be uh, defining reasons and setting goals for, number one is marketing. You know, trade shows are an absolute marketing function and there's so much that you can be accomplishing under the marketing arena. If you look on the screen, you'll see a list and these are not all the reasons, but these are the primary reasons. Second is relationship management. Because trade shows are about face, um, and it, you know you got to be managing relationships with your customers, with your staff, with your vendors, right? With um, key opinion leaders, right? Even with the show management, that's a relationship to manage. And the third is sales. So what are you trying to do in sales in terms of you know advancing sales that are already in the pipeline? Is it about generating new sales opportunities in the form of leads? Some of you have products or services that are very difficult or challenging to present in the field. So maybe that's gonna be the key focus for sales is to physically show, tell, and demonstrate your products. So what I want you to do is pick at least one primary reason in each of these three areas as a starting point. Okay, now, remember a moment ago, we said reasons are not enough. Okay, so we've gotta convert vague reasons into SMART goals, and you've, I'm, you've probably heard the acronym before, it's specific, it's measurable, it's action-oriented, it's realistic, and it's time-bound, okay? Here's an example of what a SMART goal would look like, okay? By closing time at the show, we will capture at least 50 qualified new business leads. Um, the closing time sets the time bound. At least says, hey, if we got 50 by the end of day one, we're not stopping, we're gonna go higher. 50 also sets the measurable point of it. Qualified new business leads um, defines specificity, making sure it's specific. Okay, so, you know, you think about other areas, maybe it's new customer acquisition. Within six months of closing time, we will acquire at least five new customers. Uh, maybe it's meeting with customers at the show. So you might say during the show, we will get face time with at least 80% of our active customers attending the show. So these are all examples of the SMART goals. So what I'd like you to do now is take your top three reasons and try to convert them to a SMART goal. Step number three, um, don't just think it, ink it, right? You know, don't cr create this plan in your mind. Get it on paper or get it on a document, right? And it'll help you work it through. So the seven elements of your written action plan will be number one, the, state, the statement of the goal at the top. Number two is a strategy statement, which is just a broad brush paragraph about how are we gonna do that? What needs to happen for us to accomplish that goal in a very high level? Step number three is where you start getting into the woods and you start detailing the specific actions that are gonna be required to achieve the goal. In step number four, you're gonna think about who owns that action, and who's involved in that action? Who's gonna have their hands in that action? So we're getting our staff involved. Step number five is gonna come down to time. Uh, when does it need to happen by? How long uh, do I expect this action to take? Uh, and when will be the checkpoint on it? Step number six, if there's a financial cost involved, you know, you'll wanna track that in the plan. You know, the budget to accomplish this step is X. And step number seven, 
is defining your measurement points and also the results that you're trying to achieve. And we're gonna talk about that in a moment, really coming up with your metrics. How are we gonna measure? How are we gonna know we achieve that? Okay, so to make this easy, uh, we have put together an exhibiting by objectives planning tool for you. Uh, you'll see an example of it on the screen. Um, you can actually manage all three of your goals from one document, and you can download this for free at tradeshowturnaround.com. Uh, be sure to use the code AEM when, it, when you check out and you have access to this for free. Uh, by the way, all of the forms that are part of this program are Excel spreadsheets and they are customizable. So you're not locked into the format, but the format works. You'll see it hits all of the elements of the planning uh, process that I just walked you through. Okay, number four, uh, we gotta make sure that everybody on our team knows the goals, their roles, and the key actions that they're gonna have to take uh, to help us achieve our goals. So make sure you get commitment from management and everybody who's attending the show to support the plan, okay? Set specific pre, at, and post-show checkpoints. As you know, every goal is gonna have a series of steps to get there. So once you define what those actions are, figure out when does that need to happen by and check and make sure it's happening on those dates. Make sure that everybody on the team has access to the information they're gonna need to do their part and the, the physical knowledge and financial resources they're gonna need. Be sure to keep the team updated on progress of the plan, both before, during, and after the show. And you may want to, if you haven't really executed this rigorous of a planning and execution model, uh, you definitely wanna recognize people who are getting things done and reward people who are taking you beyond your goals. So in step number four, we gotta make sure everybody on the team knows the goals, roles, and the actions that are required. In step number five, the two things we're gonna to wanna to measure is both the activity and the ultimate outcomes. So think about in your company, who besides yourself is going to need to see the results? So whose approval, support, or buy-in do you need uh, you know, to continue the exhibiting program? Uh, determine who that is. Um, your metrics, will be based on your goals. And I'm gonna give you an example of that in a moment. You know, different goals have different metrics. So it's important for you to think about, okay, what metric will I use to measure that goal? Once I have the metric, um, then I'm gonna define it. And I'm gonna think very carefully about where and how do I capture the data to make sure it's happening. And then I'm setting my checkpoints along the way in step number five. So here are the top four reasons why companies exhibit with uh, samples of metrics you could use to measure your results. So reason number one, if you're exhibiting to, to expand or reinforce or maintain your marketing visibility, presence, or awareness, so you might be tracking metrics by the total traffic at the show, uh, the number of people that pass our booth, the number of people that actually stop in the booth as a way of awareness, the uh, number of press mentions, um, the amount of information distributed, uh, social media uh, likes, tweets, retweets, uh, followers. Um, so visibility awareness, a lot of different ways to measure it. Um, branding, you know, sometimes with branding, we're trying to either uh, reinforce a certain position in the market or maybe change a position in the market. Um, so you could conduct pre and or post show attendee surveys. You could do exit interviews of people who attended your booth. Um, and you could also track uh, what media you used and how many impressions uh, were delivered through the media. Lead generation, business development, third reason, pretty easy one to track. You should be setting a very firm lead goal as we'll talk about in another session. Uh, you're gonna wanna be tracking the quantity, the number you captured and equally the quality of the leads. How much information did you get and were they uh, quality leads that had an opportunity, a project or a problem you can solve? 
if you have the ability to define the potential revenue value of a lead, um, that will help you quickly develop a return on investment. And the ultimate thing you're going to want to track on lead management is how many of your leads convert to in-person appointments, proposals, closes, and revenue. You want to track that. Okay, so if you have a new product that you're introducing, uh, you'll want to track, you know, how many visitors engaged with it, how many demonstrations did you uh, do in the booth, how many uh, media or press mentions, and of course, how many leads you captured. Same thing with social media. If you're promoting your new product on social media, you'll want to be tracking the number of people that uh, viewers, followers, friends, tweets, retweets on, on social media. So your action item here will be to go back and take your top three reasons uh, and convert it to a SMART goal and then ask what metrics can I use to prove that I had achieved the goal. So that's what we're going for. So uh, we've covered a lot of ground here. Let's wind this down and give you your uh, five actions to take to implement a results-driven planning process into your exhibiting program. Number one, it all starts with reasons. Why are you exhibiting? Number two, converting those reasons to SMART goals. Remember, it's specific, measurable, actionable, realistic, and time-bound. Once you have the SMART goal, now you've got to go to work and develop a written action plan for each goal. And again, we encourage you to download the free uh, tool. Number four, communicate the goals, roles, key actions to everyone involved. And number five, measure both activity and outcomes. So I appreciate you logging in to this session on high impact pre-show planning. We look forward to seeing you on the next session. Thanks for logging in.